when we were tossing around dates to come down, we thought about maybe coming down that last week of October, but I was like, I don't know, man. Uh, Halloween in Key West probably sounds a little dicey for an eight-year-old. It's weird. They have a thing called Fantasy Fest. You don't want to come for that. Like, yeah. I don't know. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to the Flow Show. It's your boys, Steve Straza, Sean McLaughlin, Chicago Sean. What's happening? Straza, how you feeling, my, bro- my friend? Feeling good. How about you? Uh, I'm feeling real good because as soon as we're done recording this, I'm heading up to the mountains to uh, enjoy some nature and some music. So feeling good. Um, all right. So let's get into it. Um, I got on my chart here, uh, Brandon, if you want to throw this up on my screen, uh, I got the VIX chart. Um, we, uh, the VIX was just in a just punishing downtrend for those of us who are long volatility, punishing downtrend for, oh, let's call it two and a half months. And then uh, end of last week, coming into this week, we've had a little bit of pop. Now it's just a, is this a little temporary blip soon to go back and test those lower levels? Or is that uh, bounce that the S&P 500 did off its 200 day moving average from below something that we need to take a little bit more seriously? What are your thoughts there, Straza? I mean, listen, we'll, we'll know soon. We'll, we'll have to find out. We'll just watch the price action as it comes in. There were a ton of bullish developments. Sure, the corrective action now is coming in a little bit strong, but it's only been a few days. So I would say, you know, let's wait and see. One thing stands out from Bear's perspective. There's a lot more red on this list than usual. You know, if you look at the flow table. So, yeah, so uh, up on the screen now, Brandon, is the uh, the follow the flow uh, release. What do we call that? Chart table? Yeah, unusual <laughs> options table. And, uh, and what we're doing here is we're looking at the unusual options flow, trying to figure out, uh, hey, is there, is there some, some action here that is notable that we should be taking, uh, you know, observing and, and maybe making some trades off of? So, and, and you're right, there is more red here than we typically have seen. I mean, we've been doing this show now, I don't know, on and off for about six months, I think, Straza. And regardless of the market environment, whether it's bullish or bearish, it seems like most of the action we've been seeing has been call buying activity. So yeah. seeing a lot of put buying activity here is notable. A lot of puts on the offer. Yeah. Pitcher Bank, uh, Generac, Dutch Bros, Carvana. No. So is there anything in there that matches up with some technicals that you're observing that, uh, hey, thinks that maybe uh, there's something to it, something here? Well, you were talking to me offline a minute ago about Oxy. Mm-hmm. Oxy definitely stands out. More news from Warren Buffett last week. He got approved to take up to a 50% stake in the company. So maybe that's where this is headed. That would be a lot more buying. Uh, it would probably mean more new highs for Oxy. Chart looks great. But Antero Resources was another one, which is right here. And I think energy in general, listen, like it's been really strong, even as the market has corrected a little bit, uh, even as crude oil was making six month lows. Look, if energy is above 78, I think the whole space. Uh, looks good. So, yeah, I mean, look, the energy space had every reason to sell off recently with oil coming back, but uh, I mean, we we we've been observing it that uh, that a lot of these stocks have hung in tight, right? I mean, we're we're in Oxy. We've been in Oxy for a while. We're in Chevron. Uh, that one's been doing pretty well. I mean, nothing really got hit that hard. I don't feel. I mean, unless I'm missing something. No, they've been really resilient, right? And, you know, even with the dollar being strong, stocks coming off, crude oil being weak, what if crude oil starts trending higher now? You know, energy stocks are probably still working really well. Right. So. Well, this Antero Resources, AR, um, I don't like the trading action today. I have to uh, I have to be honest with you. I'm not liking the chart today. What are you doing right now? Um, Ooh, yeah. But uh, yeah, you can see you can see uh, today's action on my my screen there um, on the left side of my my screen here. We got an intraday chart. It's kind of ugly here. Right around uh, one o'clock Eastern, we had a pretty good little uh, whoosh there. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not liking today's candle overall. But that withstanding, I mean, implied volatility is pretty cheap. If if we liked this setup for a longer term bullish play, uh, we would probably have a good opportunity to to keep it simple and just buy straight calls. Uh, there's plenty of liquidity in this name that trades weekly options. The bid ask spreads are pretty tight. Uh, we got strikes every dollar up and down the board. I mean, 
hey, uh, I would probably, if I wanted to play this, I want, I'd want to give myself some time. I'd probably want to look into January. I'm thinking at the, at the, at the earliest. What's that? That's five months from now, six months from now? January is good. Yeah. 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 It, if energy stocks are going to work, we're probably going to get a nice leg higher into the back half of the year. Yeah. Um, one thing that gives me a little bit of pause is the, uh, you know, you know, the Straza that when I buy, when I buy calls, I like to buy, I prefer buying a call that has a, an approximately 25 Delta. It just feels like that gives me a nice, a nice boost to leverage when I get it right. And also it's not super expensive. So, you know, my downside is limited, but the 25 ish Delta strike is the 60 strike, which feels, I don't know, feels a little aggressive. Maybe not. Mm, yeah. I mean, a 50% move, basically. That yeah. would be, these stocks, when they move, they move. I mean, look, AR, Antero Resources, was under a dollar in 2020. <laughs> was it really? Oh, my. That 42 today. So I think 50% a 50 move is fine. If these stocks are going to work. <laughs> I think that All right. Works. Well, look, if you if you think a 50 percent move is just another day in the park, <laughs> then uh, then buying these 60 strike calls in January and paying uh, looks like you'd pay about, uh, let's say, 250. You can maybe get them a little cheaper. Seems like uh, you can get a lot of bang for your buck if that were to happen. I got to be honest, Trezza, I think that I would play this a little bit more conservatively. Uh, call me a wimp if you want. But um, I think I would probably prefer playing this with a bull call spread uh maybe buy the 50 strike and yeah. sell the four, uh, 60 strike against it that would cost me uh that only cost me a buck 30 so basically just halved the cost of buying the 25 delta options um and i would have a much higher opportunity to profit uh, the PL. Oh, hold on let me uh see if i can pull this trade up and show show you what it looks like on my graph uh but uh, here we go let's zoom out here I mean, this is what a bull call spread would look like, right? Here's what your P&L graph would look like. We're trading right here around 42. If the stock traded anywhere above, uh, let's say around 40 or 51.25 uh, at expiration, we would stand to profit there. So we have a higher probability of success with a bull call spread, and it's a more conservative bet. But I think, yeah. I think that's the way I would play it. No, I was just going to say, uh, it is definitely a higher probability trade. Stock doesn't have to do as much to win on that one, right? Yep, I mean, the stock would have to go, let's see here, let's, uh, let's, let's play with some numbers here. Stock would have to move about 22%, you can see, I don't know if you can see that there on my chart, it'd have to move about 22 cent, 22% just to break even at expiration. Now, it doesn't mean it has to move 22% for us to make money. If, it, if the stock moved up 10% next week, we would be sitting on profits in this position. So it's not like we have to wait you know, for the 22% move to happen. Yeah. It just means that if the stock does move 22% or more from here, at least we're locked in or guaranteed a profit above, uh, let's say 31 or 51 bucks a share. That's all I'm saying. I think you make a, a good point about the price action today too. I'm looking at it right now. I mean, I love it. yeah, energy stocks are up today. Sure, E&P has come in a little bit, the explorers and producers, but XOP, that ETF is still up about 2.2%. And then Antero, that's a bearish engulfing candle down two and a half percent. So, you know, I, I I like both these setups. I don't like putting it on today, though. I would want to see, you know, how this. Yeah, I think this is one of those ones we could kind of put in our hopper here and, and keep an eye on for the next uh, few days and see if we can find a better opportunity and see if, you know, see if today's sell off is just kind of an aberration and if it just, and if it holds from here. And uh, like maybe the leaders if... like Oxy, like pull up Oxy's chart. That's love this chart yeah look at that chart beautiful now i don't want to rub any salt in your wounds but i know you recently got out of a long position in oxy it, yeah thank you <laughs> I, i've been in it since late 2020 so it's been good it's a good trade yeah. yeah i mean no one's feeling sorry for you stressy you had a good ride very good ride well done my friend um all right any any other opportunities there that are that are different outside of the energy space or is that is that what's really at the top of your list right now you know that's really what st stood out a lot of these growth stocks you know tilray sono snap no you know all falling knives for the most part energy is promising so that you know oxy also like we talked about yeah no energy is definitely promising and, and like we were saying earlier like we love the way 
you know, yeah, it's sold off. As you would might imagine, there was a lot of hot money in this sector at the beginning part of the year. Uh, a lot of that hot money has come out, but technically speaking, it didn't do a whole lot of damage to the space. These charts, if you zoom out, still look great from a long-term perspective. So resilient. And then, you know, you have days like today where these names are up five, six, seven percent. So I think if the broader market starts to get into gear, crude oil starts to work. Yeah, you'll see more of this. All right. So I think the takeaway from our show today is there is some bullish activity, options activity happening in Antero Resources. It warrants us keeping an eye on it. Uh, we're going to be patient, though, and not get into a trade today. We're going to see uh, what comes of today's action. And if the stock holds here over the next day or so, you know, maybe later in the week, this could be a good opportunity uh, at a better price. And energy, too. Like, what a big development. You know, if XLE is above 78, large cap energy, you know, I, the, the path of least resistance is higher for the whole group. So. For sure. Got to love this XLE chart right now. I mean, this is a um, very constructive action here. All right, folks, uh, that's all we got for you for the flow show today. I'm going to get in my car and head up to the mountains. Straza, I don't know. What are you going to do? Head to the beach? What are you doing? Be probably in my office. Maybe the beach. That sounds nice. Maybe. All right. All right. Well, take care, everybody. We will be back next week uh, with another flow show. In the meantime, have a great tr trading day and we'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.